In your short time, what have you learned about uh, being at Nebraska and what it means? It's been a great experience. Um, and like you said, it's been a short time. But uh, the people have been amazing. Uh, you can definitely feel the fan support and why this has the best fan base in college football. Everywhere you go, you see red and people that are really excited about spring ball starting. And the players and coaches have gone out of their way to make me feel comfortable. What have you seen when you self scouted or you know scouted Nebraska last year? What 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 are some of the things that jump off the film at you? Things that you say, wow, that we can we can really work with this. Uh, well, I think it's you know coaches and players like we're always you know we're in a constant state of improvement. So I think any time that's what we did the last couple of weeks. We went back. We did um, season evaluations of what we can do better, and then looking at different things that can enhance our system. It's, that's always ongoing, and today was the first day we went out there with our players and got to execute that stuff uh, day one, and so that's exciting. Anytime you can go back and kind of find out what you, what you can, what can you improve on and what's some new things you can add to maybe make you a little more effective and then actually practice it, that's, that's why you coach. It's, it's exciting. What, what do you make? your early impressions since getting to know some of the guys of the group you have. I know you have some limited numbers sure. and also what's what's on the way this summer. Yeah, well, you know, the biggest thing is we got to worry about who's here now and uh, very impressed with the attitudes and we had the great you know, day one should be great effort. Today's effort was great, um, but just their, their attentiveness, their willingness to learn, their willingness to accept new ideas. And, you know, anytime you get a, an, another new coach, there's going to be new stuff and the guys have embraced it. And so yeah, that, as far as attitudes go, I can't ask for better attitudes. You know, the, the guys in the fall, when we do get those guys, we'll have a plan for those guys to, to speed up their learning curve, and that's something that will happen before the fall that we've been talking about, and we'll have a plan in place to get those guys ready to, to compete and give them an opportunity to help us. I know you've talked about it on, in some of your interviews about recharging your battery last year. How beneficial sure. was that for you and just how, I guess, revved up are you to be back in a program again here. It was awesome. Yeah, the, my last year off of football um, was one of the best years of my life for a whole bunch of reasons. I got to connect with family and friends. I get to slow down. I've been doing this for 25 years. And this business, slow doesn't really happen too often. And uh, so that was great. And, you know, I was able to kind of sit back first time ever and, and watch college football as a fan. And I think when you do that, you look at things that you take – you might take for granted as a coach, you look more at the big picture instead of just looking at maybe at what your tiny responsibility was. And so that, that was awesome. And then, you know, I think when any time something, you take something away, whether it's a guy getting hurt or whether it's something that you've done a whole, your whole life that changes, you learn to appreciate it more. And, uh, you know, you take things for granted until it's actually not there. And so, you know, the thing that I really missed about coaching was the relationships, the camaraderie, the day-to-day -day interaction, which I'm getting that back now, and it feels awesome. What did you do on Saturday? Did you, did you carve out a whole day, or did you say, I want to watch this game or this game? Or well, I definitely watched, I watched a lot of Nebraska football, um, spent time with buddies, uh, and then, yeah, just re relax. relax. Relaxing and watching football is a lot different than actually coaching and watching football. And so my, my whole dream was to go to tailgates and, and have some fun and drink an occasional root beer, and I got to do all that stuff, and that was – that made it pretty fun, actually. Was it weird? I mean, were you yelling at the screen? It, it was weird. It was weird. I, well, it was, I was empathetic to coaches. You know, that's the one thing as a fan. I think sometimes I get it. Fans want it to win, and and they, they will get mad at a coach if a play doesn't work and this and that. But when you're a coach and, you know, like, hey, I, I feel bad for that guy. I've, I've been in that guy's shoes. And so you kind of, you just look at things a little bit differently when, when, you've, when you've been in games and you've called plays and you see other guys going through that same stress. And, and you're kind of also thankful that you're not in that same stress on that day. So you go on Twitter and go on a rant. Right? I stay away from Twitter. I definitely <laughs> stayed away from Twitter, no question. Matt, yes, sir. That season, is your gut feeling, oh, I could do this for a long time, staying out of it, or is your gut feeling, I really badly want to get back into it? It was both, to be honest with you. You know, it, it was an adjustment, and it takes time getting used to it. I was just starting to get used to it. Because when you go 100 miles an hour, and the job I took out of football was amazing with great people, but it was very slow. And so I was just adjusting to it. Um, and I was actually liking the adjustment just because was, blood pressure is getting back to normal, feel like a normal person. Because one thing about coaching is, is uh, sometimes you make a lot of sacrifices as far as just relationships and your family, and you put all those on hold because you want to do a good job. So I was able to nurture those, you know, reconnect with my parents, reconnect with my brother and sister and all my friends. That was awesome. Um, I think I've got a little better perspective on how I can balance that getting back into it. That's still always going to be a challenge. But, you know, I did. There were times where I was like, hey, man, I should be doing something. 
you know, and, and uh, so I did. I spent a lot of time watching football, watching film. Um, I'd walk over to local high school and help those guys out because I do love to coach. I do love to yeah. be around young guys and be around other coaches. Coach Frost, your dad, what did he teach you about coaching over the years? My dad, uh, she taught me a ton of things. Um, I'm very fortunate to have my dad in the business. He's not only my dad, he's my best friend, he's, he's my hero. Um, you know, he taught me how to treat people and, and to treat everybody the same and, and how you motivate people is by caring about them. And it doesn't matter what you know, it matters, you know, it matters what they know. And, and you can be demanding but still positive. And he, I think he was a pro at that because he generally did care about making people better. Coach Frost mentioned that you were helped as a consultant last year. What, what was that like? How often did you guys talk? Uh, how, how much did you maybe contribute last year? Sure, sure. It was, it was very informal. Because, um, you know, as, a, as friends, you always uh, share ideas and, and watch tape. And so it was very informal. But uh, we, we talked all the time before the season. We've always maintained our relationship when we first started coaching to Oregon. And so we would always um, compare and different ideas, what's working for us. Like when I was at Washington, what's working for them? Hey, I'll kind of care if I steal that. And, and I was, anytime that someone was giving me a problem, whatever school I was at, I'd say, hey, what would you do here? You know, the, the unique thing about this fall is because I wasn't out of school, so I actually had time to watch his games. And so he would just call and ask me my opinion, and then what I would try to do too is, you know, look at other football games, that things have worked, something maybe that we did in the past, and we just basically share ideas, but it was, it was really informal. That's that Chip Kelly system, quote, unquote, has proliferated so far. There's more and more teams that run variations of that sort of scheme. So what, how far did you and Scott sort of diverge in the details of what's it been like sort of coming back together? Yeah. Or did you diverge much? Well, we, 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 we believe in a lot of common things, and I, and I think uh, in how, about the style of our offense, um, where it starts, and, and so I think that's why he felt comfortable bringing me in here. But I also think, you know, part of being a, a good coach is you're, you're always evolving, and you're always trying to get better and find out where's something out there that can fit in our offense and make us better. But at the same time, sticking true to your, your principles and not getting too big to where your kids can't understand what you're doing. So, you know, that's, all, that's, that's, that's a challenge of, of coaching is because there's a lot of good offenses out there. There's a lot of good ideas, but it's still got to fit within the frameworks of, how, of what you do. What about Adrian excites you to work with him? Uh, Jewel, a whole bunch of things. So, you know, just as a fan last year, the way he handled you guys – and the way he led the football team uh, really impressed me. I mean, he's, he's a guy that's always going to put onus on himself. And, and a quarterback, it's one of those positions, just like coaches, that sometimes they get too much credit and they get too much of the blame. And, and he knows that, and he knows you know, what this job entails, and he takes it with a, a selfless attitude. And his, his deal is he'll do whatever it takes the football team to win. So at any position, you can't ask for a better attitude than that. And then just you know, seeing how he's a leader with the guys on our football team and seeing how he competes – in the, in the mat drills and out of practice today, it's it's impressive. It's did really impressive. Real, I'm sorry, did you realize right away when you were at Oregon with Scott that you guys had a football connection? I mean, do you remember when you first kind of met each other and did it just take off immediately? Or how, how do you remember that, that relationship growing, I guess? It did. You know, it was uh, – we, we were in a great situation in Oregon. We had a, we had a lot of good players. And um, there had been a system that had been built there that we were just – trying to make better. And so Coach Helf when Coach Helfridge replaced Coach Kelly, Coach Helfridge became the head coach he was on staff. Scott, Scott took his place and I took Scott's place. And it just I wouldn't say it was seamless, but it felt that way. It just felt natural. And I think the thing that helped that deal is, you know, with Scott and Coach Helfridge, no egos. And it's not about, well, you coach this position, you coach no, it's what can we all do together to get better. And so that, that makes it really fun to be a part of something, and it makes it, it, makes it easy to contribute because they're, they're, they were looking for new ideas. And then once that happened, the relation, I think the more you're with somebody and the more you're with them on the field, off the field, you build trust. And I think that trust was able to grow because we were there for three years, and we had a lot of good things happen. Coach Frost has talked a lot about organization and how that's maybe one of your strong suits. Can you kind of describe how you go about organizing an offense, what that looks like, you know, in the off season for a game day, kind of what your philosophy is on that. Sure. Um, I think there's there's a lot of things to that. You know, the biggest thing, I, I'm a big believer, too, on, you know, the, the more you prepare, the better off you're going to be. And that's for whether it's a position meeting, that's for whether it is an opponent, um, that's for, you know, when you go out to practice, the more you're prepared, 
the, the more efficient things will run and, and the, the better the players have, have a chance to, to win and, and be successful. So my, my whole thing on organization is number one is make every take advantage of every ounce of time and make it efficient. And so how do you do that? That's, that's always a work in progress. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, first of all, we came in here, right now we're studying what we do well and how do we improve that. And if there's something that doesn't fit, we're moving on to the next thing. And then we're also looking at, you know, other ways that we can enhance our offense. Part of that is, you know, look at it, other people's experience. Part of it's looking at the, the players you have on your football team and how can we get them in the best position to make plays and knowing who, who you got there. And I'm still figuring that out, to be honest with you. What have you seen from Wandell? And does he remind you of some of those Oregon guys you had years ago, his versatility, what he can do? He does. You know, I've only seen him for one practice live. I saw him as a fan on TV and was very impressed with just how versatile he is. Uh, I, I really think this offense, you know, for, for a person to come in as a true freshman and play both receiver and running back is very rare and to start and have that type of success. I think this offense, um, the way we teach it, the way the system's built, lets people come in and have opportunities to play early. And the way we practice, because we practice, you know, with, with, at, a, at a high level with, with a lot of plays and, and real fast guys get reps. And so he was able to showcase his talent as a true freshman, which I think is amazing. And then just today was the first I actually saw him practice, and his attitude was great. And, yeah, he's, he's fun to watch, and I'm glad he's on our team. Matt, when you say watching as a fan last season, are, there, are you looking at LSU or all these other teams just now that you have the time and trying to figure out how do they do things and what can I borrow? No question. You, all, you always look at other teams that are successful. I think that's not just in football. That's in business. And look, and look at, hey, how, what, is it, how does this fit? You know, how, how are they doing? How are they having the success um, that they're showing? And uh, the challenge, again, that is, is you don't want to run 10 different offenses. You know, you still have your base system, and you want to, you know, make your system as good as it possibly can be, but still have the flexibility to add other plays that might fit in or other just ways of doing things. And it's always good to look at other ways of doing things because that's how you get better. What's your see the the backtracking offensive efficiency from the first year Scott was here to last year as you watched what did you identify or, or what where what are the areas where you think it can get better from, from 2019 to this coming um you know just in general you know when we go back and we watch cutups it's uh we need to be more detailed and so de details, that's, that's every single position. That's the, the receiver getting his depth. That's the, the offensive lineman making a fast call and, and putting his hands in the right place and taking the right steps. That's a quarterback having his eyes right once the ball snapped on a progression. That's the, that's the running back, you know, holding on to the ball and understanding the, the route tree. So every position had its own specific. It wasn't just one position, if that's, if that's the question. Um, every position had its own specific things to get better. And so and that's, that's what spring ball is, is about addressing those things. What was your thought process as far as taking this job? Was it a slam dunk? Did you have other opportunities? Did you be convinced to take this job? What was that process sure. like for you? Um, well, I did have some other opportunities. I would say it's as close to a slam dunk as a slam dunk could possibly be. This, this was a, I wasn't going to get out of coaching unless it was a very unique opportunity and to work for a great program, but, but even more so for me personally to work with a, a great person and, and be around great people and still be halfway close to home kind of push it over the top. What's uh, your, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. But what's your, what's your vision for this passing attack at Nebraska? What would, what would well, we it? always want to improve. I, I think, uh, you know, we have the ability to throw the ball here. We have we have a quarterback that can throw it. Um, we have good skilled players, and we have a, an offensive line that's really jumped out to me just in the one practice, but watching self scout that we have a lot of depth. So we have the ability to throw it. We, we basically want to be um, balanced, but at the same time want to be able to take advantage of a defense's weaknesses. So if a team's going to allow us to throw the ball, we want to be able to throw the ball. If a team's going to try to stop the run with an extra guy, we got to be able to throw the ball downfield. But if a team's going to play pass prevent defense and, and drop eight guys, we got to be able to run it. And we're in a system where we're not going to be one-dimensional. Um, we want to be balanced, but the defense will dictate it a little bit by what they do, and we want to be able to take advantage of that. Getting back to you, when you took this job, you knew that you know, obviously Nebraska is the biggest show in the state, and a lot of attention is going to be. And you're going to be under a microscope and all that stuff. And that, is that a, an enticer, or you just just you kind of knew that going in? And I mean, obviously yeah. this is your first thing. You got you know, yeah. 20 new best friends uh, here. This is awesome to see all, all my new friends here. <laughs> but I'll, I'll say this: I think 
yeah, I do think this is probably as good a fan base as there is in college football. But it, I think when you're in coaching, when you're at the Division One level, it, it is what it is. It's part of the business. I mean, when we were at Oregon, when I was at Washington, I mean, every, everywhere you go, that's, that's part of it. And you know that getting into it. And so, you know, it's exciting, too. You want it that way. You know, if, if you guys aren't here, I mean, there's not a lot of attention with Nebraska football. And when you're having success or when people care about your program, that's when we get turnouts like this. And that's, that's why you do it. Your working relationship with Scott, how would you describe it? Your like working relationship with Scott? With Scott, um, I would say, first of all, a lot, lot, lot of respect. Um, you know, I, I, th I think the world of him for a whole bunch of reasons. I think I, I love the way he treats people. Um, uh, his intellect and just his knowledge of the, of the game of football. He's on the cutting edge of offensive philosophy. He's as good as anybody in the country. And people do not want to let him down because not only does he let you coach, but he makes you feel valued. And so, you know, as, as an employee, you, you can't work for, for a better boss than that. Hey Matt, will you have to say on other position groups of your coordinator title, or do you, will you focus strictly on kind of the receivers, or we have a voice in quarterback and running back and other things? Sure. Well, I think, you know, the great thing about our offensive staff is, first of all, we have, we have a group of elite coaches that have no egos, that all just want to get better, and we're all about improving. We're all in a constant state of improvement. And so, you know, if I see something that, hey, I think we can do maybe something here, um, I'm, I'm going to tell them that. And I, I've also made it clear to everybody, and I hope they feel comfortable enough around me, it's like, hey, have you, have you looked at this, or can we do it this way? So I, I do, I think it's more of a, it's, it's guys getting along, it's guys, you know, not one guy has all the answers. It's, it's everybody contributing, but at the same time, having enough trust and guys feel comfortable around each other to say, hey, what's he doing here? Or can we do this a little bit better? And so that's kind of where we're at. And Greg is the run game coordinator, which is awesome. Correct. So how will you guys kind of collaborate with your titles and kind of work with Coach Frost? And sure. Game well, first off, Greg's amazing. Um, you know, I knew him as a just as a friend and kind of an admirer over the years, but just be able to be in the room with him and having him because some of this, a lot of the stuff still is new to me. I, mean, I had to kind of come in and learn the system. The calls have changed a little bit since Oregon. And watching him teach it and then watching him work with his players uh, just in the offseason has blown me away. Of just Not only is he a great coach, but he's, he's a great person. But his thoroughness, his attention to detail, has helped me learn. And so I've, I've been very impressed with him. And then, you know, our, our thing has been, just like we were kind of talking earlier, is, you know, hey, I, to get up to speed, I, I need your help. And, and vice versa, if I can help you, let me know. And just kind of a mutual working relationship where, again, he can say, hey, coach, what, do you care if we do this today? Or vice versa, I can go, oh, Greg, do you care if we get this? The biggest thing is working together and making sure we're on the same page. But we both have to, because he has a different area of expertise than I do. And so I do have to lean on to him for a lot. And I, hopefully he feels the same way with myself. What you saw in day one today, did they match up with a lot of your expectations, or were there some things that surprised you? Uh, the atti attitude and energy today was great. It, it's tough. We still haven't watched the film because I get to hang out with all you guys, which is awesome. We're going to go watch it after this. That's when you can really tell. I mean, to be honest with you, my first day, I was just worried about being in the right spot, making sure that the plays are organized. Um, so I, my head was kind of spinning. I love the energy, but the actual details of it, of where we actually executing the stuff that we talked about in the meetings the way we want to, is never going to be done quite the way you want to. And we talked about that today. It's like, hey, the big thing about no, nothing has to be perfect. We just want great effort, and we got that. And so we had our number one expectation met. And so I'll answer your question later after I watch the tape. Outside of that effort, one of those things that you look for this morning and then later when you're watching the film, yeah, the biggest thing is, is the details. And when I say details, it's like being exact at your position-specific duties. It might be depth. It might be a quarterback having your eyes right. It might be taking the right set as an offensive lineman. Um, it might be just lining up in the right spot. And so all those things are what makes a, a football play successful. And, uh, again, you know, we talk a lot about that in the meeting room. Today was the first day we had a chance to go out and execute it, and it's never going to be perfect. And so that's why you, you, you kind of go out there and you grind through it, then you refine it. Like tonight we're going to meet, meet with our guys and refine it in video, and then we go back out and redo it again and, and correct it. So it's, 
you know, it's, it's a work in progress, but the, the specific details of each position is what we're looking to improve on. Uh, like I said, effort was there. You know, effort was there, which is the most important thing. And now it's just going and fine-tuning all our details. How would you kind of explain the job with the canvas and what did you, you know, what did you enjoy about it? Sure. Uh, well, the, the people at Canvas were amazing because, first of all, they gave me an opportunity. I had no banking experience whatsoever. Um, it was it was a public relations job. Canvas signed a big multi-million dollar with Colorado State, and they wanted a, an alumni to help broker that relationship um, and help develop relationships on campus, which was awesome for me because I went to school there, and there were still a lot of the same people when I was there. And so it was a lot of one-on-ones. It was a lot of people on CSU making them feel comfortable with Canvas and vice versa, Canvas making them feel comfortable with CSU. Uh, the fact that I got to work with my dad, because my dad's involved with Canvas, was, was awesome. And then the people at Canvas could not have treated me any better. Um, it was very different from what I'm doing now. Is that a, is that a you know, nine to five going into an office, or what's that look like? Well, I think there's definitely something true to banker hours. I used to always joke around about that, but now I know there is banker hours. Banker hours are, do not equal coaching hours. I mean, it's half the time, and just like having weekends off and every bank holiday, I'm like, it's pretty good living. And it felt, compared to coaching, it felt like retirement, and I wasn't ready to do that complete. But it was, uh, again, it was awesome, and uh, the people were great. But this was just a special thing that kind of pulled at my heart to work with to work with Scott and, and the great staff we got here. Did you play a lot more golf last year? I'm not a big, I had opportunities to play golf, but I'm not a really good golfer. But I did. I kind of I hacked. So I hacked a lot more last year. Uh, spent a lot of time with my nieces and nephews. Um, got a lot. Spent more lot more, more friend time. Um, a lot more social. Like a lot of my businesses were social. So. A lot of happy hours, a lot of coffees. I mean, it was almost too much of that stuff. But it was, yeah, it was awesome. It was just kind of slowing down and really enjoying people and being in the moment and, and being able to have conversations like this without thinking about what about this first down or this third down or this and that. And being, so that, that part was really cool. When you're with, with your guys, whether you're watching football or whatever, how do you impart the importance of one step or a yard of depth or you know, sort of what, what is your process for showing? That details are sure, sure. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, it's a, it's a couple of things. You show them on tape is one is one of it. You first of all, you kind of install it just like a teacher on a, a chalkboard, and this is how you do it. Then you show them. Then you go out and you try to walk them through before they actually do it. Then they do it, and it still might not be perfect. So then you go back and show them, and just really emphasize why it's important. Why, you know, this is the this extra step might get you open, or this extra step might help the running back get a big play. And so making them understand the importance of why we need to have it at that depth and the import and how it all ties into the team. With uh, JD stepping away from the team this sure. spring, do you have any role in that? Or as someone maybe who didn't know him maybe as well, do you step back and let some of the other staff communicate? Or, or what's your role in that? Well, yeah, to be honest, when I got here, that's, that's kind of when he took his, uh, his leave of absence for having space. And that's where we're at with it right now. I know I heard Coach Frost just talk about and we're giving him a space and we wish him the best you know I know he uh, just watched in football last year he's a talented player that made a lot of plays but I, but I can't echo enough you know as a coach you control what you can control and that's the guys that we got here and, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Hey Matt what will your primary recruiting areas be in Nebraska where you have like a couple regions that are going to be yours and, and kind of what will your role be as a recruiter as a coordinator and a recruiter? Sure um we're still figuring that out, to be honest with you. Uh, I've had a lot of experience. Just, I've actually, I think I've coached in every BCS conference, so ACC, SEC, packed too many conferences, Big 12, Big 10, so I got the trifecta. So I've had a lot of experience in different states. Uh, I've had pretty much every major state. So I, I, I'm comfortable wherever they put me. Um, I think, you know, as, as, a, as an offensive coordinator, part of your job is not just to recruit your position, but to help the rest of the offensive coaches. And, and make those other players, whether it's an offensive lineman or a quarterback, them feel comfortable with the system that you run, and just make them feel like they're going to be taken care of when they get here. Because I do think, you know, we've got great facilities here, we've got great tradition, but I think our biggest selling point here is we got great people, and, and making kids feel comfortable. And kids want to go where they feel comfortable and where they're connected. And so hopefully I can help with that. What was your first uh, challenge to guys like Alante and Demarion and Jamie, who are still really young players, haven't even played at games in some cases? What, what was kind of your message going into the spring for them? Uh, well, there's been a couple things, but, but the biggest thing is is just to, to do your best. 
you know, it's not going to be perfect. And especially when you're a young guy like Alante, like today, he did some great things, but there were some things that you get totally overwhelmed. Well, you got to expect that. And so just take, take everything one plate at a time. And if something doesn't work, a mistake, we're, we're going to fix it. We'll move on to the next we'll play. And just to have that, that one plate at a time, that one day at a time, and that uh, I call it the seventh grade attitude. Some guy, just they always want to learn, you know. And, and as long as you have an, you're an open book and you want to learn, and you're going to give effort, everything else is going to take care of itself. And uh, you know, like today there were a ton of mistakes. Well, that's how you learn, you know. Mistakes are good if you learn for them and don't dwell on them. So we've talked a lot about that and just giving max effort. I know they're not here yet, but how much do you study and watch Fleming, Betts, Manning, Nixon, and these guys come in? And how much could that change your your group sure. in July when those guys are all on campus. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all those guys on film, and they're all explosive, special playmakers. They're all a little bit different in their own way. It's it's very hard, you know, to evaluate someone that's not here. It really is. Um, and so, again, you know, what we're doing right now, and I've told those the guys that are here, hey, there's some guys not here right now, so it's an opportunity for you to show what you can do. And, and they get that, and they know guys are going to come here to compete. But uh, as far as the guys coming in, all we can really do is before they get, we're starting to put together plans of when they do get here, how we're gonna, how can we speed up the learning curve and accelerate that? So that's been talked about, and that's, but that's really all we can do. And we can't really do anything until they actually get here. On paper, from what you've seen, is it, I mean, as ranking into other receiver classes you've been a part of, is that, is that as good of a class as you've seen, or have you seen classes as deep as the one you're bringing in this year? It, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I've been around some, I've been lucky enough to be around a lot of NFL guys, and, and uh, but, but yeah, I mean, just just watching those guys on tape. I, mean, I don't care any school you'd be at, you'd want to have those guys as, as part of your signee class. I think your dad's first year at Colorado State. They played here, didn't they? They played here in '93. I was not there, but I think they did know, play here. Yeah. You, coach Osborne was the coach. I know you've talked a lot about Husker history. Do you, sure. Do you, was it a program that you followed as someone who's in a football family a lot, Nebraska? Football? Yeah, no question. I remember back. You know, my dad used to be the defensive coordinator at Miami when they had some of those big knockdown blowouts, and that was at that time the two best programs in the country. It was back and forth every year, and so that's where it started. I was probably in eighth grade at the time when that stuff started going down. With being a coordinator, how, how important is it to have an experienced back like Mills that really came on at the end of last year and kind of a building block for uh, So it's always good. You know, this system, I look back at when we were at Oregon, you know, we had an NFL back where we go Royce Freeman, DeAnthony Thomas, Byron Marshall, all those guys were NFL backs because th this system, you know, I say we want to be balanced, but we have to be able to run the football. And so it's a big deal that's having a good running back. And I think because, you know, formationally, we can do some things that can help a running back out by spreading out the field. But we also have the ability, without a lot of mental gymnastics, to get in tight sets and, and add an extra blocker to the set, too. But to answer your question, to have, to have an experience back is a huge deal. And actually, we have pretty good depth at running back. We just got to keep building on it. How, how, how did you get here? Uh, I was just saying, how, how would you describe your, your game day roles? Like, I assume Coach Ross would continue to call plays. Are you giving input in those moments, or, or what, what's it look like on game day? Sure. Well, that's a good question because we're still discussing that, to be honest with you. But uh, I know one of the things, you know, when I was at Oregon, uh, before when Scott left and I took over the play calling, but when, when Scott was there and we were both there, um, it, it was game day was fun. I thought our give and take, being able to, to make uh, adjustments in between series, um, I think Scott, as a play caller, is as good as it gets. I mean, I learned a ton from him, so when I took over for him, I mean, his influence on me was the biggest influence I could possibly have on how to, how to call a game, especially uh, in this type of system. Yeah, I was going to ask you, so when you get here, when you dive into kind of self-scouting, um, do you feel like that was productive? Do you feel like you guys, you and Coach Ross and the staff, found some answers of, you know, kind of where the problem areas are? No question. No question. You know, and like I said, it wasn't just one thing. It's always, and that's why it is every place I've been. It's, it's, you can never, anytime something doesn't work the way you want it to, it's never just one thing. It's always an accumulation of things. And, and the more you really look at it and the more you study and evaluate it, you, you start talking about how you can fix it and make it more efficient. And so I think it was huge, you know, and I think, uh, According to Scott, we were a little more thorough. Part of it this year was because I'm new, so I had to learn the terminology. I had it's a whole new. I mean, there's a lot of same stuff, but there's a lot of new stuff too. So that's part of the reason he was patient with me. Hey, I want to watch every single play we did last year. How can we make it better? Or if it doesn't fit, let's let's figure out something else. And then we also, you know, before I even got here, he gave a lot of other coaches projects on studying other good 
college systems or NFL systems, and then kind of picking and choosing what stuff that we like actually fits with what we do. And so we put kind of all that stuff together, and now we're, we're working on it this spring. Scott mentioned uh, Chris Hickman was working as an outside receiver. What uh, I know he was kind of recruited as a tight end. What, what do you like about his skill set to uh, look well, at him at that spot this Sure, he, bring, he brings a physical presence because he played a little bit last year as a tight end. He showed up in limited reps as a physical player that you can count on as a point attack blocker, which is rare for a receiver. And so bringing that into in the receiver room is a big deal to have a guy that enjoys contact and, and likes blocking. And I think all our, that's an important deal in this offense, too, because we do so much stuff on the perimeter that you have to be able to block to play in this offense. And so he's, he's, uh, he, he's, he's getting everyone excited that he's with us. How would you block the grade and speed last year, would you say? It can always be better. I mean, that's the kind of thing we're all, we're, it's as when I always tell the receivers this, there's nothing that says more about who you are as a person than by the way you block because it's completely selfless. I mean, we want guys that want the ball, but when you're actually blocking, it's, it's for the betterment of the whole football team. And any run past 10 yards is because of receiver blocking. So it's something we always talk about. Matter of fact, we talk about that more than we talk about catching or running routes because they got to feel the importance of it. But, you know, it's – there were some there were some good blocks. There were, there were some good things that happened, but it can always be better. Thanks, coach. Thank you, guys.